Ciao guys and welcome back, it's your friend Luca and in today's video I'm gonna share the settings I use to retain good quality of film grain for the video that I upload on YouTube. I often get the question why my videos are looking so sharp without suffering from the YouTube compression, so I decided to make this video to reply to all of you at once. One of the secret saws I use to have sharp and detailed images in my videos is to use the film grain. And it doesn't have to be a lot, you can just add a minimum amount of film grain to have better looking images, mostly for two reasons. At the first place, when you export your video with a little bit of film grain, you're gonna help your software to better separate the shades of colors in your video. So you're gonna avoid the problem of uh, bending, that is uh, pretty common in 8-bit cameras, but also with 10-bit video footage if you apply a strong color grade. And the second reason why the film grain is gonna give you a better looking image is because adding a film grain you're gonna add a sort of texture in your video, so the footage is gonna look uh, more organic and detailed without having the digital look that you can have if you increase the sharpening in the setting in your video. Now that I have explained the advantages of the film grain, if you like the video right now, you're gonna help the YouTube algorithm to share this video to the world and hopefully we are gonna all see better videos online. Like always, I'm making this tutorial using DaVinci Resolve Studio, but you can basically apply all the rules with all the editing software that are available in the market. So I will import the footage three times and we're gonna see the three different scenarios considering also the plugins you can use to add the film grain in your footage. I will use a film grain that you can find on non-stock platforms but also from DaVinci Resolve, Dehancer and the Film Converter. I will first show you what to avoid so when you drag and drop your uh, film grain on top of your, the footage you change the composite from normal to overlay and if we have a look together at the footage you're gonna see that it's a little bit too messy and too strong the amount of film grain that we have in this footage considering the YouTube compression and if we look closely to the grain that we had that, uh, we can see that there is uh, some uh, chromatic information in this uh, film grain considering the rules from YouTube uh, we are gonna sacrifice other color informations going around the video so it is better to lower the saturation of this film grain to zero in a way that we are gonna have just a luminance film grain to save a huge amount of data that we can use to have better quality footage. The second value we should change from our film grain is the amount of opacity. I find that a good spot is between 20% and 40%. It depends mostly from the scene we filmed because there are scenes where the film grain is gonna be more visible or less visible. And as we can see, the footage start to look uh, pretty good without the problems of the YouTube compression. In case you don't have a film grain to overlay on top of your videos, you can simply create it yourself. It's extremely simple. You just have to import an adjustment layer and on the bottom of this adjustment layer, you should just add a solid color with the color of uh, gray. Mm, yeah, so I think this looks uh, pretty much like all the stock film grain you can find online. After that, you go in the color page, generate a second node, and then you add the film grain from DaVinci Resolve. In this case, you need to have the DaVinci Resolve Studio version. Uh, I don't think you can do it with the free version. And then we just adjust the size and overlay of the grain, and then change the global band uh, at the end. And then we just export the film grain we generated. As container, I use the MOV extension, and as codec, I use the DNxHR with the 444 12 bit output. And this will export the film grain we generated at the best quality possible without too much compression. The reason why I prefer the overlaid film grain over the real time generated film grain from DaVinci Resolve or the answer or film converter is because this will speed up a lot my rendering time when I export my videos and if I would have export something for example for Vimeo or for other type of distribution where a bitrate is not a problem I would probably use the real-time generated film grain because it's gonna provide a more realistic film grain in our footage. Now let's talk about the film grain I have in the answer. I can just drag and drop the plugin in the node 
and you select the camera in this case there is no Panasonic Lumix S1 or S1H in the settings I have no clue why maybe it's time to include this camera and as you can see the default film grain is a little bit too strong and yeah I find that the best way to retain a good quality grain without having the problem of the denoiser and the compression from YouTube is to set the size and the amount to the minimum value. It is also really important to lower the chroma to zero so we are not gonna have uh, chromatic information in the film grain we're gonna add so this will be more efficient considering the limit in the bitrate of our final video and I increase the film resolution to 100% because in reality the film grain should soften a little bit the image of our videos but I don't like that look in my case I increase the film resolution to 100% and this is it with the answer you can have a pretty realistic and subtle film grain with these simple adjustments and it's sort of the same with film converter but I don't really love the film grain coming out from film converter in my opinion it looks a little bit digital but if I have I set the grain strength to 132 the grain size to 23 and I remove the saturation if there is some and the image softness I leave it to zero so I can keep a sharp and detailed image with this plugin as well and regarding the export settings I export the video in mp4 as container the codec I use the H264 for the encoder I change it to the Intel Quick Sync because to my eyes the final render looks better and cleaner with this encoder and then I change the quality from automatic to restrict to 100,000 kilobytes per second that's it add to render queue and export the file so this is it for today guys I hope you enjoyed the video and if you like this type of tutorials please stick around consider to subscribe also to support my channel thank you so much for watching and I hope I'll see you next time ciao